Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce the world premiere of Ooh. The Wires 2012. <laughs> yes. yes, this evening Steve Moyes will be providing the musical interludes. And we have an amazing cast who include the A Band. Vigil for criminals are still free men, and the Coptic church was scattered with body parts. A girl holds a sign depicting Jesus, but I don't recognize him. At the Sa Santa Apollonia train station with no trains, or rather there are trains, but they won't move today. In a state of depression, there is no lower than this. It calls for endurance. There is no lower than this. to give us his predictions. His kindly face scans journalists who kneel before him. President Obama will lose because he's expelled more Latinos in the US than anyone else in history. Reporters will say go purification rights. By the way, any forecast can be changed any time by magic spells. <laughs> <laughs>
little bit of that. So two stops. While the millionaire carried on. A stripped carcass. Balances on stiff pads. Resting on thick circles of wood. By a shiny cleaver.
Poor because of you. Cardboard protests make their point above literate breasts. Poor because of you. The B-movie Tigress yanks at a gate which does not open. Unable to control his features, but the joy of being a young policeman is so great sometimes. He laughs as ladies crawl in between his naked trousers, tunneling. Now, friends, this is strictly symbolic. Our candidate must be someone who can instinctively turn right. They were confused, wondering where have the people gone. Then our friends became to turn away in scorn. Despite our offering, like this ostrich, problem is it's quick. We follow it down. The streets in our Toyota. It ambles before the bumper. It will not rush. Reminding us of a schoolboy shuffling home. Then suddenly it's off. Luckily, we met a dog. Found snoozing up beneath a bush. A bush. You can hear me yell above the wind rattles on the microphone, keeping time with my team, while Steve, director of our reserve, explains what we did and also how we did it to the reporter. The 64-year-old tub of 
Wow. Spreads it on his bubble. Knocks. He smells good. His wife knows. Yes, he does smell good. Didn't you didn't smell good, did you? He twizzles the tin between his ring fingers. And she can't help Adolf. Adolf! We lost. She can't help smiling. For this fat is as white as snow, creamy as icing. A winter wonderscape in a rusty can. And it brings back memories of care packages arriving to fill the empty stomachs of World War II. Plus the blue silkscreen tartan juxtaposes nicely with the pastel check tablecloth. The container was so pretty, she kept it these many years. Swift, bland, large. The taste of reconciliation.
English questions. Grandma, are you alive? Did you freeze to death? She chuckles and extends her feet forward. Giant barking black dogs circle the axe which swings back over the woodcutter's head and arcs down to split open logs. I think I should vote for Putin. When I turn on my TV, I look at him all the time. He sunk deeper and deeper down into the mud. I felt powerless too, sunk my knees inside the sand. I stroke his filthy flanks, my bare calf leans across his back. My toes and his hooves lie side by side. His shoulders must be heaved up and his chestnut flesh dragged, scraping across silver carborandum. His rock pool eyes stare past my face as he slides as quiet as a cabbage on a conveyor belt. Where are the politicians, may God bless them? They say they will only come here when they have a budget. Veneer in my office and a new old flag for citizens who live in holes and in walls within holes and in walls within holes and holes within them. Daughter dances for the camera while I chop tomatoes into a blue plastic bowl. Mm, it's a good sharp knife. I know it won't be easy for children born and brought up in Khartoum to go back with me to southern Sudan. <clears throat> Government TV interrupts this program to bring us some happiness. I've just seen the Commandant and he had a victorious voice. He was eating soup and this made him have an energetic voice. Smile. This morning I had yoghurt. And I will be having squash soup after my walk. running around in red pants and vests. Yeah! Yeah! Blokes can be blonde too. Passports and papers and pens. Lines, stamps, fingers. Turquoise script scribbled tiles. Burgundy nylon jacket. Brave young words from a student voter. In translation for viewers, I want to blind the enemy. The very first moment of the morning throws cobalt shadows on peach walls. Snipers bob like seagulls shooting at journalists driving out of Atarab at a speed measured in calm panic by a northern Irish accent. The vehicle comes to rest by an olive garden. Silhouetted trees in sunlight. Gunfire plays. <laughs> tracks of her cheeks into a pinkish mouth. Face bones fill the crunch that is like a hot smile. With almost unbearable pick up laughter, the 12-year-old is carried high. Oh, wow. She suddenly shot up, much taller than her mother. White lilies, daffodils, chrysanthemums. It's going to be a bumper harvest this year. We'll bring home more coffee than 2010. More than 2011. I think all the local country is bad. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.
some mothers paint their nails with a clear polish from a tiny glass vial. And even when a son sits in prison, not sure which one, waiting to be killed, this mother does not bite the ends. Man pulls head low and zips across streets, tiptoes beneath satellite dishes, grey fox in grey light. Little people shuffle from one foot to another, not really sure where to stand. Parents hang placards round their infants' necks. Patience, Bashar, the son of the Kurd will dig your grave. Death has been banned. The commune cannot afford the space. The deceased do not want to travel down the road to be buried over the hill. That village is full of enemies. The girl in a cardigan doesn't care because she is never going to die. Dark blue and green underpants sing on the wire of the exile's heart. Glass yellow is stuck to the back of the final blue. Goodbye. Farewell to the hole where silence buzzes for. Translogistic has come to get your radioactive uranium. The streets bounce, 
piles of violently lurch, a red orange ocean, panting, heaving, up, down, panting, heaving. Later the reporter walks back to the body. Soon the ambulance should arrive. off a rubber tube and suddenly it's raining in the desert. Hope is leaking from the tanker parked over the powdery salmon dust. On his face, filled up towards the chassis as he stands under the base of the truck whose furnace plate has become a trickling shower, the water gurgling through ripped steel. Soldiers on the skyline, occupy outposts, sunk in thought.
shivering, seeing friends make moves they shouldn't do, ducking, dodging. He comes out of the wood. One by one he shoots them all. One by one they topple. It's so quiet. I feel him place his boots right in front of my face. The warmth of the barrel. Loud bang like being punched in the shoulder. I try to keep it at a distance. Two. Seeing the place I saw the killing felt, well, as I got off, I stepped one pace closer to taking this island back. People get ready to sing a caring song, a Marxist song. All the voices of the rainbow and children mingle in pain. Segregated in the courthouse, he can't listen, but he knows. The crowd are singing in the rain, those words that he says, the brainwashed millions? What does he feel about this? He's not a man of many reactions, points out his defense lawyer. One blue sky above us, one ocean lapping our shore. There's no shortage, sure, there's no shortcut to freedom. to wear sunglasses when primary rifle in this sun. He sets up his laptop on top of the Coca-Cola fridge. Double megaphones. Tell me how you feel driving this land. Are you alright? Tin neighbourhood. Tin in the heat. Plenty air conditioners would not help. Worms in water wriggled from factory. Rest of our stopcock. Cut off plastic bottle hangs on wire off wood. I wonder what it is for. That sound of the door blown open by the wind.
On Christmas Day last year, Boko Haram rammed a car packed with explosives into the gates of St. Teresa's Church in Madala, and 44 were killed. I like what I was seeing. 